Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today, um, Dirty Nights with Phone Labs. We are very, very excited to have you tonight, and we hope that after this session, you can share your learnings and takeaways to your friends, your family, and social media, so more people can be aware of what to look out for in the ingredients in your daily products. Feel free to tag Phone Labs in your stories. Hello. Yeah, feel free to tag um, Phone Labs in your stories, okay? And your Instagram posts, okay? We are also currently live in the Phone Labs Facebook page. Hello, everyone watching via Facebook. Feel free to put your questions in the comment section and we will try to address them as long as time permits. Let me go ahead. Okay, welcome everyone. All right. Good. We normally start after five minutes to give time for people who will come in and for people joining the Zoom webinar and uh, for people who are watching us over Facebook. We would love to know what you look for uh, products when purchasing your facial moisturizer. So uh, do you look at the price? Do you look at the brand? Let us know in the chat box in Zoom and comment section in Facebook. We will go through this later, okay? All right, let's see. Okay, hello, hello, see you. So yeah, we would like to know what you look for when purchasing your facial moisturizers. Feel free to chat, okay? Chat in the box. Let's see your Facebook. Good. All right. Nice. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Feel, continue to put your, um, your responses in the boxes. And I will just explain that at the bottom of this page, you have a chat button. If you click on it, you have two options, send to panelists uh, and attendees and send to panelists only. So for this purpose, please click on send to panelists and attendees so everyone can see your responses. All right, and um, my name is April and I'm from Dolce Vita Event Singapore. We are a sustainable events company and we produce and host webinars globally for our clients. We would like this event to, of course, be very interactive, so it will be more enjoyable and interesting for everyone. So we encourage you to participate by chatting and uh, so that you can also get a lot of things out of this session. So this session will have six parts in it, uh, clean beauty, raid my pantry, strip and bear, Dirty Cop, Grill Me, and finally, Nightcap. So before I introduce our main speaker, I would like to share some housekeeping. So right now, everyone is muted. I will be overseeing all the technical and back-end aspects of this webinar. And we cannot see your video right now. We can only see your names in the chat. And later during the Q&A, we will be inviting you to turn on your videos so everyone can see each other and so that you can ask questions directly to our speakers, okay? And if you're, if you're not comfortable turning on your camera, it's also okay to keep it off, no worries. And this session is being recorded and we are also uh, live in our Phone Labs Facebook page. And I've mentioned this during the start of the session, but I will repeat it for the benefit of the people who just logged in. Um, this is about the controls of Zoom. So at the bottom of the page, you have a chat button when you click on it and you have two options, send to panelists only and send to panelists and attendees. So if you click on send to panelists and attendees and chat, everyone can see your responses. If you click on send to panelists only, only me and the speakers can see your responses, all right? And at the bottom of your screen, you have a Q&A button there. If you click on it, you will be able to type your questions anytime during the webinar. Um, it will be combined in this Q&A box so we can easily address your questions during the later part of the session. You can, of course, uh, also send your questions anonymously. And uh, feel free to share your support and encouragement to our speakers via the chat. You are more than welcome to do that, all right? Um, so in this webinar, we will be talking about DIY uh, beauty products from home. What are some do's and don'ts? And what are some good, simple formulations you can easily create at home to complement your existing skincare? And of course, reducing food waste while you stay at home during this circuit breaker. So I would like to introduce our speaker to you. Um, in July 2019, Han started Phone & Co. with Lionel and Eldred with a vision for sustainability and uh, clean beauty. So Phone & Co. now runs Phone Labs conducts workshops, 
and carries out research and development on wellness and clean beauty products. Um, for their journey, I will let them share more. Uh, all right, thank you for being with us and sharing your expertise to us, Han. Hello. Hi, thank you, April. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, for those of you who have been with us for three weeks, it's been three weeks, huh? Uh, time really flies. Um, I can tell you, the whole team, uh, we, were, we were, you know, during rehearsals today, we were just talking about how it's unbelievable that we went through this for two weeks um, of preparation and then three weeks of the actual show itself. And finally, we are here today, our last show of 30 Nights with Fawn Labs. And I hope for those of you who have joined us for three weeks, you would have uh, enjoyed yourself last two weeks. And I hope today we will also bring you good content um, that you can actually, you know, carry your clean beauty and sustainability journey forward with. For those of you who are here for the first time with us, thanks for joining us. You can still reach us um, and look at our last two episodes on a few channels. We will um, be posting today's recording as well on our Facebook. So may I have the slide, please, for um, our um, handles for our social media? Yes, so there you have it. So we are on Facebook as Fawn Labs, on Instagram as Fawn Labs, and also we have a web page um, that is www.fawnn.co.com. That is, um, it still uh, works in the progress. So if you want to contact us via email, you can email us at info at phone and co. Lastly, we have a Facebook community page that we invite anyone with a passion for sustainability and clean beauty to join us. There, you can post anything you want. You can post any questions, any sharings, any learnings that you want everyone to, you know, take note of on your journey. Um, we also are very happy that recently we had Green Mama share her event with us as well. So that's uh, where you go to, to have a community of people who are excited to talk about clean beauty and sustainability. So um, thank you to April for giving me an introduction the last few um, you know, weeks. Um, today I shall share a little bit more about myself and get a little bit more personal with all of you, my journey and how we ended up starting up Fawn Labs with Eldred and Lionel. So my journey with clean beauty started with a um, health scare sometime in 2013. I was diagnosed with a um, rather serious condition and I went through almost, I think, um, four courses of antibiotics and was not getting any better. So then the doctor gave me a last uh, course of antibiotics and told me um, to go home and I was supposed to go back to the hospital two weeks later and to um, take the last x-ray. And if indeed the infection doesn't clear up, I would have to start on this you know, program where I have to go to medical institutions um, every day of my life for at least a year. So you can imagine how you know, scary that was for me, right? So I went home and um, being very desperate, I started looking at alternative methods as well. So back then, I had a family friend who was sharing with us some botanical methods for health, for general wellness. I actually contacted her and asked her if she had something that would address the problem that I was having, the illness that I was having. I think at that point in time, um, I didn't tell anyone in my family what was happening to me. So it was quite traumatizing. Um, I then uh, used that botanical extract um, aggressively, I must say, on myself. I also took the last course of antibiotics and two weeks later, I was at the hospital taking my x-ray. So that was, it, was, it was a bit um, odd that day because the usual x-rays, they would ask me to go into the doctor's room very quickly and then they would show me that the infection is still there and they would give me a new course of antibiotics and tell me to try again. So that day, I, was, um, I had to go for lunch and I come back and I was still waiting for hours. And finally, I think towards the evening, um, the doctor was ready to see me. So I went into the doctor's room and, and for the first time, there were so many people in there. Um, usually it's just the attending nurse and the doctor who was attending to me as well. So that day, I think I saw a lot of uh, senior doctors as well and, and they put up the x-ray right in front of me and they were telling me uh, to sit down and I was like, in my mind, right, I was shocked because I was like, okay, it's something more serious than we imagine. If not, why would so many people be in the room? 
And then um, unknowingly, when they showed me the x-ray, um, they told me with all honesty that they don't know what has happened, but it seemed like the infection was completely gone. Nothing. There was not even a scar. Um, for people with this condition, even if they go on to recover, they usually have scarring and, and it takes many years and some of them never did get rid of that scarring. So when I saw that x-ray results, I went home. Um, it's quite, you know, it was, it's, it's a kind of a journey for me. You don't take away an experience like that in your life and tell yourself that it, it doesn't change anything. So everything happens in all our lives for a reason, whether it's good or bad. So to me, this is definitely good. And I, I wasn't going to waste this opportunity. If it was something bad, we usually tell ourselves to, you know, learn something good from it and then move on and hoping that will change our lives and other people around us positively. So with a good experience, I was definitely not going to waste it. I then went into a lot of um, research and self-studying to find out what exactly was in the botanicals that actually assisted in my healing and um, prevented you know, the situation from getting worse and most importantly, remove all the scarring altogether. So um, the next three years, I will spend that really doing a lot of deep research. Then finally, in 2018, I left the finance industry um, and I set up a... Um, Asia-based family office and I went on to pursue my diploma in uh, organic skincare formulation and a, a advanced diploma in cosmetic science. So um, a year later, last year in July, I started up um, Fawn Labs with Eldred and Lionel. So speaking of Eldred and Lionel, I shall bring them on to the show now so that you can meet both of them. Some of you have met Eldred last night, uh, not last night, sorry, last week. And you will get to meet Lionel this week as well. They will share with you what kind of journey we took from there. But um, before they come on, I, I almost forgot. <laughs> so we, we started this journey at, at Fawn Labs. So sorry about that because every time I talk about my journey, I get a little bit emotional. <clears throat> So um, in August this year, so it's shortly a month after we set up at the lab, um, luck has it that I would contract actually um, adult chicken pox. So if, um, for those of you who had it when you were kids, right, you will think that it's not um, something serious, right? But to, to be honest, when I had adult chicken pox at adulthood, uh, um, in, in August last year, it was not a funny matter at all. And today I'm going to show you why um, I was severely depressed at a point in time. So this is a photo of me seven days after I had my chicken pox. So you imagine how I felt because I am also then the co-founder of a beauty company and this is the way I look seven days after I, I had my chicken pox. So um, I took this photo then um, because um, the doctor, I just came back from the doctor that day. And the doctor told me, you're not infectious anymore. You can go out if you want to. Um, don't worry. It's all going to heal. You're not going to look any worse than before. And I went back. And um, I think if, if you can tell, right, I had this very frightened look on my face. Um, you know, we showed this um, photo at, at a live event. And we had a lot of people make, you know, visible. But like all, all, I could really hear a lot of people gasp. And I know I look very scary. But I decided to, to share this with all of you to show you my journey. So that was how I looked seven days after I had adult chicken pox and very se uh, severely demoralized. That night itself, I drove to the lab at 12 midnight. Um, I formulated four products that will target um, things like and um, reduce my scarring, healing, anti-inflammation, um, you know. So I brought them home and I think I got home like close to three o'clock in the morning. So I washed my face with a cleanser, put on the toner, um, put on my moisturizer, and then um, the follow-up with the face oil that I formulated, and I went to bed. So the next day, I woke up, and um, I think almost 24 hours later, I took this photo. So you can tell that I'm genuinely smiling now. You had to trust me that for seven days, I didn't smile. It was, I was in a lot of pain, but the, the, the real pain wasn't what I was feeling physically. The pain was actually a lot emotionally and, you know, 
because of uh, Fawn Labs itself. I even told Lionel and Eldred at a point in time, I think we have to stop the business. We have to, you know, I cannot do this anymore. And then 24 hours later, um, when I look at myself in the mirror, I had a sense of hope. So, um, well, I'm sorry if I scared all of you with um, the first photo and it's still there on the screen, right? So we call this the Halloween edition whenever we share this story with you. Um, before I show you more photos of my recovery, I want to now um, seek all of your help to key into the comment section. If you are on Facebook, um, you can key into the comment section. If you are on, on um, Zoom with us, also key into the comment section, right? And I'm going to show you a third photo. I want you guys to guess. How far apart were these photos taken? Bear in mind, I've used only products that I um, formulated myself. They were pure botanicals. There were no synthetics in there. And uh, these things do take some time um, to work. So I'm going to give you some time to key in um, how far apart these two photos were taken. Okay. Mm. Well, I was definitely smiling in the, in the third photo now. Okay, we are looking at some of these um, guesses. Um, we have two weeks. We have one week. We have, wow, you guys have a lot of faith in the things I formulate, huh? You think that I can heal like that in one, two weeks? <laughs> this is not a chemical face heal, guys. <laughs> one month. Mm. Well, okay. Just so that we can move on with this discussion, right? And a lot of you would have um, some thoughts in your mind as to how, how far apart these uh, photos were taken. Um, when we had, um, when we showed these series of photos at a very large event with uh, thousands of people, most of them guessed um, one month. That was the most, um, that was the highest guessed um, um, duration. So I will let you know the true answer to this is this was exactly one week from the first photo. So guys, I want to show you the last photo and that's exactly three months after the last photo. So this was how my skin looked. Um, in this photo that's showing three months later, I didn't have any makeup on. In case Elizabeth is around tonight and you're wondering, there was no makeup on, okay? So I have been very, you know, um, Following that, right, uh, this experience, I was very, very convicted that what I'm pursuing with Eldra and Lionel, right, I have something there. I have something to share with you guys. I have something to share with the world. Just have faith and you use a product that has no, you know, um, harsh chemicals. It may not work as fast or as well at the start, but that is where you have to be patient and let the ingredients, the well-formulated products, right, work and work well. And sometimes they take time. I will share more about this later, but now I will bring Lionel and Eldred onto the show to meet with all of you. Eldred and Lionel, please. Hi. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi guys. Did I, did I scare away half the people already? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> nah. I'm just going to mute myself. You guys take it yeah. from here, okay? All right. Sure, sure. So, um, my name is Eldred and um, I'm in charge of all the slides. So, all the slide transitions that you've been seeing tonight is all me. <laughs> I hope uh, I haven't, you know, been goofing up. So, uh, when we first did the... Um, the lab over at Trust Street. Um, I was responsible for the design and the construction for it. So as some of you may have known from the previous episode, we, we shifted to Tanjong Paga and uh, we moved into this very beautiful office space uh, located at Trust Street. Uh, it's actually in a row of uh, very nice heritage uh, pre-war shop house buildings. So when we first uh, uh, started the design process, um, we already knew that we wanted to minimize the, uh, the amount of changes to our original floor plan. And a big reason for, for doing that was because we wanted to reduce the amount of construction waste that was generated uh, normally from renovations. Um, so in a way, it was therefore both fortunate and unfortunate that the space was in an old pre-war building because uh, this naturally meant there was a lot to repair and there was, a, but at the same time, there was a lot of old vintage elements that you wouldn't be able to find in normal build, uh, like modern style office buildings, uh, such as the um, 
the old style uh, colonial windows, the uh, exposed uh, floor beams above, and then the uh, lovely wood flooring. So uh, we decided, uh, because we are, we are designers, we decided to go with a vintage modern look that combined the old elements with more uh, modern expressions uh, in the carpentry and the furnishings. Um, sorry, let me share the screen. So this is what we had in the office. Uh, so as you can see, we tried to marry some of the old elements with uh, a lot of new things. Um, uh, we did this by balancing so the very modern shelves right next to the old style windows and with modern materials like the metal framing. And then we had some modern string chairs that brought back a bit of a vintage character. Uh, at the same time, as you can see from the picture on the right, we decided to do some really bold, futuristic features uh, like the, this wall lamp directly above old style uh, wooden wall panelings. So uh, in the consideration of uh, sustainability, uh, we chose to actually reuse a lot of old shelves and tables for our back end office. Uh, and we did this uh, in order to actually reduce uh, our carbon footprint. Uh, and speaking of carbon footprint, uh, Lionel, would you like to share more on that? Lionel? My video. Yeah, hi. Uh, all right, Eldred, thank you for that. So we, uh, like, we were, like Eldred was mentioning, uh, we wanted to go big on uh, sustainability. And then uh, how we did that is by reducing our carbon footprint, consciously reducing our carbon footprint. So how we went about is by, we decided to source and procure pre-loved or used equipment as much as possible. You know, uh, when you buy a used item, okay, comp what, uh, you actually uh, save and cut down on carbon footprint because when you, well, buying a new item would have been so much easier, all right? It would have significantly re increased our carbon footprint. So, until now, uh, to date, we've already gotten the UV sterilizer that we use to sterilize all our equipment, two refrigerators for our ingredients, a printer and a projector from various trading portals like Gumtree and Carousel. You see, in, in fact, now uh, we are still trying to look for a dishwasher. If you all know where to get one, do let us know, right, in the chat. Okay. Uh, along the topic of procurement, we also needed to purchase containers and apparatuses that uh, we provide to our workshop participants. You can see in the photos there, you can see on the left and right. Okay, uh, when we want to push further our sustainability message, we decided to get reusable glass bottles and jars instead of plastic. Okay, actually for the recycling of single-use containers, glass as a material it is worse than plastics in Singapore. Why so? Because in Singapore, we do not have any glass recycling plants here. Okay, In Singapore, how we recycle glass is by collecting, sorting, and then exporting it out to other countries. Therefore, resulting in a much higher carbon footprint, you know, because glass itself is heavier, and therefore the cost of moving it due to the increased fuel use, transportation, right, uh, would increase the carbon footprint itself, all right? So this is why we advocate the use of uh, reusing the glass bottles and jars by washing them. And that's why we chose glass to give to our participants. Okay, the only single item, single use item in our set of equipment is actually the disposable hand gloves. But that's not much of a choice because you cannot wash a pair of gloves and safely sterilize them. Okay, moving along, if you can remember how the glass bottles look like, right? Uh, you notice that they have a very distinct design character. And for that, I'll let Eldred explain that further. Yeah, Eldred? Thanks, Lionel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we wanted to have a very distinct uh, design character for our packaging that would really be very different from the uh, plastic types that you normally see. Uh, and we wanted it to be such that it would reflect the natural and botanical aspects of our ingredients that we deal with. So we, we needed something also that was uh, sustainable. And for this, we, we researched and we eventually came and decided to incorporate uh, compressed bamboo. 
in, into our packaging design, as you saw from the, the earlier pictures. Uh, now, bamboo itself is a very good material because it's highly durable, biodegradable, and hypoallergenic, uh, making it a very ideal choice for the caps and the covers. Um, also, the farming of uh, bamboo is also very sustainable as uh, bamboo plantations are highly adaptable. They, they can literally grow anywhere. And uh, they are also very high yield because uh, these uh, plantations regenerate very, very quickly. So I, from that, I hope you guys get a better idea of how uh, Pond Labs uh, uh, is dedicated towards our environment. Now, uh, in summary, just share the slide. In summary, um, this is about practicing conscious sustainability. I would like to recap what we have spoken. Um, and that is by making creative design decisions, uh, always consider the carbon footprint and try and choose where possible um, sustainable materials. So with that, I would like to pass you on back to Han. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Hello. Thank you. So I'll see you guys later. Well, um, I, I made a check. Uh, we didn't lose much audience, so I didn't scare away a lot of people with my Halloween edition. Thank you for staying on. And, uh, you know, so um, thank you to the guys also for sharing with all of you how important sustainability is at Pond Labs. When we talk about sustainability, right, we're not only addressing that the ingredients must be uh, good for our skin, good for our, um, for uh, the uh, oceans. We also want to make sure that every part of the lab, when we set, uh, set it up, we want to ensure that we practice this mindfully and that we let that theme uh, carry through the entire setting of the lab and the experience of all the participants as well. So here at Fond Labs, what do we stand for? Now, there are four things that's very important to us. We want to ensure that we use good efficacious ingredients. We want to formulate with ingredients in the right amounts. And we do not want to have any ingredients that causes harm to your skin or the environment. And lastly, we will use ingredients that are naturally derived and non-synthetic organic where possible. So with that, I shall now move on to talk more about clean beauty. That's why we are all here for tonight, right? Um, this week, I promise all of you that I'll talk a little bit about DIY. Um, why I want to talk about that is because indeed, the DIY topic is very much congruent with um, the clean beauty movement. We do DIY because we don't want to buy things from the, the shops because of the ingredients that may not be, you know, um, that may be toxic and stuff like that. We also want to make things ourselves so we don't buy things in plastics or glass as um, Lionel has shared just now. Glass may not be the best or so uh, if you um, throw it after one use. <clears throat> so this year in um, February, when the COVID first um, hit us in Singapore, uh, there were a lot of people who were sharing, you know, the use uh, make, to make sanitizers from, you know, their own ingredients from home. Um, I had a huge um, discussion with my team because as a formulator, when I look at those online, they call it recipes, um, shared very widely. I was very, very, very worried for one reason, and that is I, as a formulator, know that these products that you are teaching people to make out there, they do not work to protect your family against the COVID. So then we had um, this huge um, discussion about what we should do. And we fast forward, we actually wrote uh, an article that's still shared on our Facebook um, as to why we view homemade products, DIY, as uh, dangerous if you do not understand how to properly formulate them. Now, the danger behind these is usually not because you choose most of these um, things that you make from home, right? You would have chosen ingredients as botanicals and stuff like that. But in a situation like this, right, you need these products to be properly formulated. You need the alcohol to be the correct um, percentage, which is why I talk about formulating the ingredients in the right amount. So bear in mind if you're making anything, it's not about what ingredients you choose. It is about the percentage of what you put in there. And sometimes one or two ingredients work well together. Some actually cancel out each other's effects. So if you don't have the training behind it, it is better not to try and make something from home if you're trying to address a very serious um, issue. 
So that aside, right, um, other than badly formulated or mis, uh, badly formulated um, products from home, uh, one of the main things you must be aware of is as long as a product has any water-based ingredients, and by water-based, this is where you have to be very, very, very careful. It's not just water. Uh, we're talking about things like aloe vera. We're talking about things like witch hazel. We're talking about things like honey. Um, basically, if you have any of these products inside the thing that you're making from home, right, Make it only for one use and discard the rest after that. Because anything kept more um, overnight or more than a few hours actually starts breeding bacteria. Um, you don't see this with your naked eyes. So you can put it on and you say that it doesn't do anything bad, but you don't know. So that's where I'm trying to caution all of you, especially going forward after we learn the lesson from COVID. And you do know how COVID is spread by water droplets. Okay. So the other thing is, when we usually do DIY from home, and if you're doing it together with friends or some family, somebody sharing with us, it's always from very well-meaning um, friends or family, you know. But you must understand that you have to take all these advice from somebody who is certified to tell you if it's okay. So well-meaning aside, right, if these people are not certified, they may not be giving you the best advice to, you know, formulate something that is safe and that's useful, that's suited for the purpose. So if you have all these friends and family who are still doing DIY from home, and they're not really sure how to do it, and they're using water ingredients, um, do support them if it's because they want to introduce a product to you. In, you know, maybe they are selling one of the ingredients or something like that. Do support them, buy that, that ingredient or something like that. But also, do your part in educating them that, that, that may not, the, the DIY products that they're making may not be in the best interest even though they come as well-meaning friends and family, okay? Um, things that are okay to formulate yourself at home without preservative, and by preservative, that's another topic altogether. We need broad-spectrum preservative. A lot of people are thinking, and they have asked me during this COVID period, is it okay if I put, say, rosemary essential oil? Is it okay if I put a lot of alcohol? Is it okay if I put vitamin E oil? And then worse still, I have people who's telling people, other people to make things because jojoba oil is an antioxidant and it's, a, it's, it's equivalent to a um, um, preservative. It is not. So bear in mind that none of these things are actually preservatives. A well-formulated preservative is broad spectrum and you have to get these things from the suppliers that supply to skincare formulators and brands like ourselves, okay? Um, we are happy to share more information as to what trade names and you can import them in if you want to. If you're interested to know more about preservatives and what preservatives you can um, buy and what trade names they are, right? Feel free to key it in. I'll share more after the show by replying to your messages. You can also email us, okay? So I will move on now. Um, and thanks for hearing me out on DIY uh, products and safety and the do's and don'ts. Oh, I forgot to mention that uh, if you're making things from pure oil ingredients, like if you put together coconut oil with a little bit of essential oils with the right um, amounts, because essential oils, you have to use them carefully. You have to follow derma limits, okay? So if you use these um, and they're all oil products, it's okay not to incorporate a broad spectrum um, uh, uh, preservative but do include an antioxidant like uh, vitamin E oil if you can because they keep the oil fresher for a longer period of time. If not, make them in very small batches. Try and finish them up within two to four weeks. Okay? So, I shall now move along to the next segment where I believe there are a lot of racing hearts out there today. I, I, I may have a lot of guys and boys on this show tonight because they have seen the photos of my um, guests this week. The last two weeks, I had two lovely friends join me and I was so happy to banter with them because I've not seen them for a long time. Now this week, my guest is um, different. She means something different to me because I've not gotten to know her until this period when I'm staying home and um, producing this show for all of you. So her name is Hui An. Um, if you look at the photo, she is younger than I, but obviously you can't tell that um, our age gap is not wide. <laughs> Now, Hui An is, um, I got to know her over this week's preparing for this show, right? And uh, she has shown me some of the things that she's passionate about. She has even taken over our Instagram feed uh, for one day. Uh, we are still sharing that on our Instagram page. You can find it under our highlight button, Hui An at Dirty Nights. 
So do go and take a look for those of you who have not watched her through a day, uh, staying home during this circuit breaker. I will not say any more about Hui An, but I really adore this girl. She is a true um, you know, role model for a lot of us. And I shall bring her on now to the show. Hui An, please. Hi, guys. Hello. I'm not really a role model. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm an arts enthusiast. So I'm very passionate about all things related to like visual arts, dance, or cooking. And um, my day job is a marketing executive in an art investment company. But I find balance like after work or on the weekends um, by, by trying my head at new recipes or painting or reading. So recently, I'm into um, reading up about Singapore's social political landscape and as well as um, on child education. You mentioned uh, social political landscape, right? Yeah. So what about that interest a girl like this, a pretty young girl like you? <laughs> oh, um, I think it was more like um, I was, the migrant worker um, situation was brought to light during this certificate mm -hmm. period. So I, I just wanted to um, educate myself more on what's happening behind the scenes. So you did spend this period um, staying home and understanding a little bit more about the social, uh, the social issues at yeah. hand, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But before I, I really want to talk about that further because this is something that is very important to us at Fondlets as well. Um, before that, I want you to share with us, right, what are the things that you have done um, during this stay home period, right, that is different from usual, that contributes mm -hmm. to sustainability? You know, what habits have you changed? How has it changed your life? Examples. Uh, my life has not changed very drastically. It's just like um, things I would do outside, I just adapt them to home. Like um, I work out more at home. I don't need to travel um, around to go to the gym or use like um, extra resources just to work out. So I guess that's a good thing. Um, I also am eating more plant-based meals and for like the more perishable um, fruits and vegetables that I can't finish before their um, freshness period or something like that, um, I will freeze them. So I'll eat them later. So for example, like frozen grapes or mangoes are also really good for snacks and for desserts as well. Well, you're freezing other things, right? Also, which we will touch on later. <laughs> as I found out, <laughs> I had to spend a lot of time with her um, digging what's in her pantry, right? And how we can help her with some um, food waste issues. So while she is also with good intentions, like our DIY sharing family and friends, right? She's not with the best education on what can be frozen, what can't be frozen. But we'll look at that later, okay? Sure. So thanks for sh sharing this with us. So back to the social um, issues that we are facing now, right? Just to share with you, um, sometime in February, we, we at Fond Labs, we actually contributed to this uh, course um, because most of us in um, Fond Labs, um, the team itself, we are, most of us are, are parents. And uh, although we don't, I don't look like I'm a lot older than you, <laughs> um, we also have kids and aged parents. So the idea of family is very important to us. We decided to contribute by um, taking in old bottles to sterilize them, sanitize them, and then we filled them with um, hand wash um, that we, we formulated and make ourselves in the lab. And then we distributed this to lower income families. Okay, so that was what we were passionate about. Um, I understand you're passionate about the migrant workers. Can you share some, um, some more with us um, how, how their plight is and what we can do, uh, how we can be more aware um, to make um, these migrant workers' lives better mm -hmm. as well? Um, I think I wasn't really as um, informed about the situation before the circuit breaker period. So during the start of the, this period, I was made painfully aware of their, um, their plight. And this pandemic has really brought the suffering that arose due to um, systemic issues to light. So like the number of cases in the dormitories, they have been consistently, consistently high for more than a month. And this is in part due to like um, the poor living conditions in dormitories that leave them very vulnerable. So like, I think some Singaporeans see like um, migrant workers as a separate entity, but they are as human as we are. And they also make up a significant portion of people here in Singapore. They make up about 15% of our population, which is really a, 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 quite a big amount. So uh, Singapore also like wouldn't be the way we are without them. So our infrastructure was also built on the backs of um, them and their um, previous generation. 
So I think it's um, really sad that they have to leave their families in search of a better life in Singapore, yet they get paid so little and they are not integrated into the Singapore community. And by the way, to keep costs low, um, they are also not accorded basic labour protections, and, uh, such as standardised working hours, minimum wage and a right to unionize. But um, I think despite this, it is good to see Singaporeans realise the prejudice we had towards them and um, the complacency we had in enacting change. So there are more Singaporeans now um, filling in the gaps to help like non-governmental uh, non organisations that help support the migrant workers in tiding over this pandemic. But I think that it cannot just stop there, like something has to change on a higher level mm. as well. Yeah. That's wonderful. See, guys, now you can understand why I'm so enamored by this young lady, right? She has, she's laughing at herself. Don't laugh at yourself. It's very admirable for you and what you're do, doing. Because um, this period, right, whenever I have the chance to have an, uh, a good, proper conversation with a lot of my friends, our families, right, my point has always been that a lot of Singaporeans have been too comfortable. Um, they lived uh, in a very sheltered environment. They do not understand that there are people out there who does not even have a proper house, right, to stay home. Um, when, during the home-based learning, right, we heard of families, right, with children, um, so many children, and they don't even have a laptop. And then there, there are people at home. Um, I just cannot believe it. Like sometimes when I refresh my Facebook um, feed, right, I, I, I feel like, you know, why, why are people so self-centered you know like i I'm, I'm, I'm forgive me if I'm, I'm i'm saying something that is um a little bit more intrusive um you know but uh yeah truly they, they complain about things like i mean Huyen, i'm sure you read right like oh i have to cancel my plans for travels mm -hmm. oh it's such a bummer i'm so bored at home look at my big house i can't do anything here oh man i can't go to the gym oh i can't go for my favorite you know like um you know how many star michelin food and stuff like that right oh they're gonna close this i cannot oh, the delivery guy takes too long, my bread is soggy and all, and I, I, I really feel so much, you know, and sometimes, um, I gotta be at me before I met you, I always think that, I always think that um, kids, right, or um, kids, not, no, I don't call you a kid, as in like kids, as in my, my children, that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about, right, my children, they are always, um, you know, they're very sheltered, um, your, your age group, I would think you're very passionate about a lot of things. You're very passionate about improving yourself, but you mm. don't really look at how to improve other people's lives, right? So mm. it's so important to meet someone like you, right? And give me hope because our children have hope. If you raise them up well, you end up someone like Huyen. And congratulations, Huyen, on doing a really, really good job. With, uh, Thank you. Know, you. Uh, and I, I love it. I love it. I'm going to bring you back later to the show mm. to explain uh, about something that we have decided to support um, way on with okay but we'll move the show on now because a lot of people are here to get some tips from us how to make use of food waste right so my conversation with Huyen right oh my goodness this girl I asked her so what do you usually eat and she cooks very well by the way so then um, we talk and she's like oh I have tea I'm like tea oh then you can use the tea leaves for something something and then she went like oh so I must break the tea bag I'm like did you just say tea bag young lady uh, yeah, see her, her guilty face. <laughs> so I showed her how I drink tea at home. I use something like that, okay? So this is something that I actually got, um, got this from Earthly as well. If you have been following us, I've been buying a lot of stuff from Earthly, right? Um, that I need, okay? Things that I need to ensure that I reuse such that I don't have one used stuff that I throw away. So this is actually a tea strainer and I put loose leaves in them. I close, Hui En, I'm demonstrating, pay attention. <laughs> okay, so this is where you put tea leaves. You close it, you put it in the water, you take it out, and then you throw the tea leaves into your compost bin, and then you wash this, and you can reuse it, right? Mm. So if you don't use it, yes, <laughs> you will end up with a lot of tea bags. So she has tea bags, and I'm going to show you guys how you can use it for your skin without throwing it away immediately so at least we're using it for something else before we throw it away okay so what do we have today i ask you to bring a few things shall we take a look yeah i shall show you my loot <laughs> very me. good okay so i asked her to bring her tea bags mm -hmm. so the tea that she has been drinking okay. yes so that's the tea that she has been drinking what tea is that um it's chamomile tea ah chamomile tea is very suitable for baby skin like yours okay <laughs> 
So chamomile has a lot of properties. It's very good and very gentle. It's very soothing. So it's a good choice. Um, then I asked her to, I asked her what did she freeze in the, the, the um, freezer. She told me she put a cucumber in there. I'm like, you cannot freeze. You cannot freeze cucumber and use them. And today indeed when she took it out, she told me she has trouble, you know, doing yeah. like trying to cook them so i said don't worry i'll show you how we can use it uh, for our skin okay ask her to bring a bit of water a scissor some tissues and another spare bowl okay so what yeah. you do now is we're gonna make a paper mask okay for our skin and under eye bags um so you basically take the um tea bag out and i need you to cut it open in, in and then bowl. yeah just the, so the, this you can, yes, this way. So you can actually leave the uh, leaves inside the new bowl itself and pour water. Yeah. Try to keep most of the paper intact. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Just cut right across. Okay. And then um, empty out the tea uh, leaves inside. Into the bowl. Yeah, into the bowl. You can pour some water into the bowl, right? I hope your hands are clean, okay? I forgot oh, to yeah, tell you. I washed it, I washed it. <laughs> Yeah, so she has some water, right? You can put some water in the bowl so that you can wash the bags as you empty the tea leaves out. <laughs> I can see Catherine. Um, Catherine, thanks for joining us. So if all of you were here last week, Catherine was our guest. She's vehemently saying they are not biodegradable, okay? So remember how uh, uh, Catherine practice, practices sustainability in her life. So she's very indignant now. <laughs> Yeah, so you wash it as, as best as you can. It's okay if there's some remnants, right? So you know your cucumber, right? You can put it into the water itself and steep the cucumber in the water that with the leaves, okay? Now for Mushy those of, um, up to you, you can put as much as you want because uh, okay. really these are just a very light infusion so they are not going to be um, too mm -hmm. harsh for the skin, okay? So for those of you who don't freeze your cucumber, you can put in things like the, the, the um, skin or the core if you don't eat the core things like that, and you put it into the water with the tea, right? Um, for skin that needs, if you have puffiness around the eyes or eye bags, right, a good tea bag uh, to use, right, will be black tea or uh, green tea because they have caffeine and antioxidant uh, benefits for lines and also puffy skin. Caffeine is very good to, uh, caffeine is astringent, so you can actually tighten up your puffy eyes, okay? So with that, right, you have a piece of paper there, okay? If you want to put it under both eyes, you will have to cut it into half. Okay, and then you dip it into the water and then you can lie back and put the paper under your eyes like that. And you can keep doing mm. that for as long as you want. Just remember, don't keep this concoction for longer than, you know, overnight and things like that. Okay, at the end of the night before you sleep, throw them all away. Okay, now you can see. So imagine that you've already dipped it like that, right? You can put in the cucumber and soak it for longer on a normal basis. Okay, but this mm. is how you prepare it. And then you just put it on your skin. That's all. It will have the benefits and when it dries up, you can dip some more and put it on the skin. Dries up, you put it back in it again. Is. Yes, yes, something like that. Oh, she's going to demo. Yeah, so it feels very cooling also, right? Yeah. Yeah. And cucumber has wonderful astringent benefits for the skin as well. It will close up your pores and stuff like that. So that's a nice place to put it as, as uh, on. But I don't see any pores on you anyway, okay? But thanks for demonstrating the camera. <laughs> Okay, so this is how you can use it um, um, one more time uh, before you actually discard them. And guys, this is so important as well, right? Because we, we usually, on a usual basis, you drink the tea and you throw it away. That's right. So once it dry, you can dip it in again. Other things that you can mix uh, with the tea would be some honey, you know, honey is antibacterial. So you have a particularly bad breakout along your chin or your cheeks and stuff like that, right? You can drop in some honey and mix it up. And then use this. Just remember to discard all these at the end of the day. Don't keep them overnight. Certainly don't store them and use them for weeks and months, okay? So thank you, Hui You can remove them. Later, you can continue using them again. But I need your mm -hmm. face to do something else now. <laughs> thank you, Hui for for demonstrating this for us. So now you learn, right? Number one, you don't use tea bags. Number two, you cannot freeze every vegetable or fruit, okay? I know mangoes are very nice. And grapes yeah. are very nice. And yes, I, I do that also. But uh, du durian as well. Durian is very nice to be frozen. <laughs> but no cucumbers. If not, you will waste the whole cucumber like that. But today we are not wasting it, okay? Yeah. All right. Got thank it. you very much. So I asked Hui to bring a moisturizer today because that's what oh. we're focusing on. Did you bring a moisturizer? She picked 
I would say uh, one of my top three favorite brands, um, uh, one of the American, a, uh, what you call that, the uh, um, in, indie, indie brands, okay? Uh, so she has, you want to show us and tell us what it is? Um, this is the Drunk Elephant B Hydra Intensive Hydration Serum. It's, very, it's a very long name. I'm very excited about your choice, but I'm not excited about something. You want to make a guess? You look at my face, it's like, oh, she's going to scold me again. <laughs> I was watching her on her Instagram takeover, right? Do you know what this young girl does? She buys so many skincare products, right? I don't even know. I, I make them myself. I don't even have as much skincare as this young girl. Why do you need so many skincare products for? Look at your face. You're so pretty. I think I'm like just a bit um, impatient when it comes to buying products because like I want them to be effective immediately although I don't even know what effect I want it's just so, like yeah for general like mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, you need chemical peels and stuff like that you need to go under the knife for, for general immediate thung, and you don't need it okay <laughs> You see, the thing is, right, uh, when you buy skincare products, right, some of them take some time to, to work because um, it, it's like our skin has a 30, for your age group, it's about 30 days renewal for the new cells in your d deeper derma to surface again, right? So if you use something good and you do your extraction and you do your exfoliation, you get rid of the bad and um, old and dry skin, the new one takes 30 days at least for, to come uh, to the surface. So for the, the folks who are older, not myself, <laughs> Other, other women, <laughs> it takes longer, like 40 to 50 days sometimes. So you must be mm. patient. And if you have been following our discussion earlier, right? I promise you, I did not put anything harsh or synthetics into the products I made that night when I went, went back to the lab to make. Can you see how well they work? If they, you use the right ingredients, actually do work. And three months later, my skin was, I thought I had to go under the knife already. You know? I was quite certain I had to do chemical peels. I had to remove my skin, some grafting or whatever. I was so depressed. Mm -hmm. So I hope that serves as a reminder for you when you want to overbuy products next I'll time. I'll be more patient. I'll yes. Patient. Yes. Okay, patience and also you don't need so many things to do one purpose. So go into a shop, right? Think about what it is used, being used, what, what you want it for and, and, and take a deep breath, walk, walk out of the shop and go buy other things first and then tell, ask yourself, do I really still need it? I have like 17 at home. She has more than 17, I saw. <laughs> okay. 17, no, actually it's 18, right? <laughs> We're going to now look at the ingredient list for you, okay? Mm -hmm. And see whether you have uh, spent good money on that. Okay, so this is Wei An's uh, moisturizer. I'm sorry um, for interrupting. Yes, yes. Why don't April? we, why don't we uh, share to everyone? Yes. Uh, why don't we let Hui know that we collated all the responses from the viewers so we can ah, share great. it to everyone. So, um, so we asked earlier what are um, your reasons why you purchase a product. So CU says no mm -hmm. sticky feeling after application. Carolyn says sun protection. Um, Elizabeth says hydrating but not oily. Um, and then uh, Barisa says fragrance free and hydrating. Uh, CU says no harsh chemicals. And as Linda says, fragrance free, got SPF. And from Facebook, uh, Lorraine says um, feel on the skin. And Cheryl says um, enough to withstand Singapore weather yet potent to retard aging and address all concerns of middle aged women like me. Lost. Uh, elasticity, drying patches, and large pores, sebum collection, especially in the T zone, etc. etc. Wow. Thank you, April. See, all these reasons that these, um, my fellow women are giving to us, and I don't know if there's any meals within there, right? These are all things, right, that you can treat easily, right, if you're using the correct products. Hear me out, okay? I didn't say if you're using a lot of expensive products. I said the correct products, okay? And they do, don't, they do not, if you have been with us for two weeks, this is the third week, right? They do not have to be very expensive, okay? Um, number one, they don't have to be very expensive. Number two, you don't need a lot of them. You don't need a lot of uh, moisturizers, a lot of uh, face wash. All beauty industry has a lot, promotes a lot of waste. And this is what we're here to hopefully encourage all of you to try to lessen that waste. Okay, I'm not telling you not to buy. I buy too before I started making. Okay, um, but truly 
um, a lot of these we, we have covered last week, this week. The part about you, uh, feeling that it's um, dry, that it's not sticky, right? You will find out in one of the products later what is the ingredient and whether you should look for a product that does that to your skin, okay? So April, I shall now move on to the ingredient list itself, okay? So we have the same criteria. And thank you, April, for that, okay? Um, we want to look for ingredients in the list that are not carcinogens. Carcinogens are things that may potentially cause cancers. Toxins are things that's toxic to your body and to your skin and to your health. Uh, irritants are things that uh, irritate your skin. They may cause some form of, um, you know, uh, like rashes. Um, they're also potential irritants to your eyes and maybe your organs. Okay, um, allergen is just things that um, people may be allergic to. Pollutant is very simple. Um, it's just ingredients we don't like because they are non-biodegradable and they are not good if you wash it down and the ocean catches it, okay? So I'm going to now look at the full ingredient list of uh, Hui Yen's product. And um, I must say that uh, I'm happy that this is actually one of my top three favorite um, brands for skincare. Uh, run through very quick water is fine, coconut alkynes, you know, these are natural, Co okay, coconut alkynes, right, it's a very interesting, um, interesting um, ingredient, because it does exactly what silicones do to your skin, so last night I was on, an on another show, it's called Pajama, um, uh, Pajama, I need Cat, Cat to tell me what's the full name of that, mm, Pajama Pillow Fight, <laughs> sorry, Later, I'll get April to put up the link, okay? Or Kat, you can just key it to everyone, okay? They run it very often. Do join them on their show, okay? Um, so this does exactly what silicone does to your skin. It leaves a nice shine, but natural thing. It's, it's um, biodegradable as well. It's not like silicone. So I like it very much, okay? Glycerine, pantaline, glycol. These are all okay. Um, the next train of them, they are all botanical extracts. I use all of these in the lab, in fact. Marula oil all the way down to... Um, Let's see, where do I stop? I will stop at uh, apple fruit extract. Okay, so these are okay. Panthenol is a pro-vitamin B5. Sodium PCA is a humectant. Okay, there you go. Cat has just us. Pajama party pillow fight. Thank you, Cat. Um, sodium PCA humectant. Okay, um, then we have another humectant that's like higher uh, luronic acid. This is a smaller molecular structure compared to higher luronic acid. Um, um, Dipotasium glycerhydrate is an active. This is actually a licorice root extract. This is, I talked about this during cat show last week or so. Licorice root extract is very good for brightening. Okay. Um, niacinamide, there you go. It's another ingredient I talked about um, yesterday on um, cat show as well. This is vitamin B3. Um, cyclodextrin, that's a chelator. So what the chelator does is it stabilizes the entire formulation. Um, sodium hyaluronate, that's a humectant. Sodium lactate, that's a humectant as well. Um, then we reach the, this is actually the preservative in the entire um, formulation. So we don't like this. Uh, we've seen this as well in the last two weeks. Phenoxyethanol, and I'm going to cluster it together with ethyl hexyl glycerine. These two are actually there because they are preservatives. Um, the one before ethyl hexyl glycerine is chlorpensin, right? That is also a um, preservative, but that is fine. And then everything else in between, um, they are like chelators, pH modifiers, uh, it's emollient. These are all okay as well. These two, however, um, they are known to have... Um, be a little bit on the toxin side, so toxic side, and they are potentially irritants for your eyes, etc. Okay, but having said that, the entire um, formulation that's how I'm looking at, right? It's very well planned out because the if you look at it, the top uh, few pro, uh, uh, ingredients on, on the list, it means that they're using the most percentage and the follow with the least percentage at the bottom. So they use very little of these ingredients as a preservative. Um, if you're not since you have 17 on 18 products, you're probably using this once a year, it should be fine. But if you're using something with these in them, just take note that you don't overuse them, like don't use them like five times a day or something like that, okay? Um, you can, if they really work well for your skin and you want to continue using it, this is like a great product except for the um, two um, um, ingredients there that we highlighted. Um, other than that, it's really fine, okay? Um, I see Elizabeth Chia asking what is the name of Huyen's Moisturizer. It will come up again. It's, um, the brand is called Drunk Elephant, okay? So Huyen, I will let you go and take a rest. 
while I harass other people with the, their products. And I will see you at the end of the show for you to talk about um, what we are supporting you with. Okay, Huyen? Thank you, Huyen. Now I'm going to move on to the second uh, moisturizer that we received uh, via our face, um, our Instagram. This one came in by Instagram. Um, this is Le Sophie Lily Rain's moisturizer. Um, she bought it from LA Brocket. It's a facial cream uh, that's light. I've not seen this brand before, so I was very, very curious and I picked it. Uh, let's look at the ingredient list uh, with the same criteria again. So, um, I was excited when i saw this it's um like basically there's just one thing in there that i don't like and that is alcohol okay so earlier just now i heard uh, from april some of you are looking for ingredients that evaporate fast that doesn't make a sticky feeling on, on the skin right one very easy way to achieve this um, effect on your skin in a product is to put in a lot of alcohol and that's what this um it's, it's there uh, for actually i think Okay, it's also like, um, it's also mildly preserved, um, a, a mild preservative. Um, but other than that, right, I ran through the entire ingredient list, right? It looks very good because they have a lot of botanical extract there. Cucumber fruit extract is one of my favorite. It works wonders for pores. Um, it works wonders for, for fine lines. Um, they, they have e, uh, essential oils as well. So they definitely don't have uh, uh, fragrances and Parfum, which I really hate. You guys know that by now. I don't need to go through that. Okay. Um, the sunflower seed oil is perfect. Um, lavender flower oil. That should, the lavender flower oil should be the um, botanic, um, the essential oil that we're talking about there. Um, even the thickeners and the chelators, like sodium phytate at the bottom, right? That's the chelator. The preservative in this ingredient list is actually sorbic acid, um, sodium benzoate, and potassium sorbate. Um, to be honest, and I'm revealing uh, what we do, uh, and benzoyl, benzyl alcohol, okay? So they have four different ingredients for preservative. They are all plant extracts, okay? I'm going to reveal our, what, what we use at our lab. So these are the exact ingredients that I'm using in the lab itself, okay? So I know what they do. I know um, I've um, done uh, tests on them in terms of stability and stuff like that also. So this is a very well-formulated uh, product. And then... Um, I had this huge issue because at first I was like excited. Then I take a look again at the ingredient list, right? And something confuses me. I started thinking, if they use this much alcohol, right? Are they making a hand sanitizer? Like, why do you need so much alcohol? Because it's the first on the list, right? And then I read on down the list. Do you see what they have done with the ingredient list? They have actually um, arranged them according to alphabetical order. And I was like confused. I'm like, why the hell do you do that? Is it because you're trying to teach people to sell? Is it because you're trying to hide something? I don't know what they're doing. But um, personally, right, as a formulator, as a brand owner, I'm telling you, these are practices. Last week, we went through what are the um, uh, you know, good corporate practices a brand should do in order to instill trust between the consumer and us. So this is absolutely not acceptable by any standards. Although the beauty industry has no regulatory requirements in any firm, um, you know, uh, any, any forms at all except for European side and the US side, it has some regulatory requirements, right? Um, but there's, you know, just this a unspoken thing that if you want to put out your ingredient list and you do have to put it out for, to inform the, to be, to be more transparent with your consumers and this is not the way to do it because you're basically hiding how much uh, of a bad ingredient or good ingredient you're using i'm sure they don't want to hide good ingredients but if you're using something really bad they don't want to let the consumer know like with huyen's uh, drunk elephant it was different they did use things that we don't like at least they're not carcinogens they're just toxins okay and light ones but you know that they use it in small percentages and if they are using it in larger percentages they do declare it but a brand like this does not declare it, makes me very uncomfortable. So even though the uh, formulation is very, very, very good, okay, in terms of the selection of the ingredient list, remember one thing that Fondet stands for is that we formulate with ingredients in the right amounts. It's very important. It's like essential oils. It's great. I love them. But if you overuse them, there's a lot of health issues that can uh, happen in, in terms of your derma, derma health, okay? You can cause allergy issues, it can cause, um, you know, irritation and stuff like that. So that's not the only ingredient. Alcohol, so if you use very little, it may help to evaporate, um, you know, 
uh, the product itself. But if you use too much, it causes um, a lot of derma issues. It's irritant by itself. That's the reason why it's highlighted because I thought they used so much of it, okay? And I shall not uh, go on with this because I have two more products that I want to bring out. Uh, I will move on for now. But uh, disappointing because of the way they present the ingredient list on their website, okay? I'm going to move on now to the third product. And this is actually a semi eight moisturizer. I am so excited when I saw this comment because... Okay, guys, this is about uh, 510 bucks for 50 milliliters. You heard correctly. It's $510 for 50 milliliters. And I have been a victim of this before. And why I say victim and not consumer or customer, let's take a look. I'm sorry, Sammy8. I'm sorry. I hope you still love Fond Labs. Please don't hate us, okay? Please don't hate us. Okay, the same criteria. Ah, I have to do this to SK2 and then I did it to Chanel. And, and this is also something that I, I you know, um, when I, before I was a formulator, I, I always thought that uh, I didn't have time, you know, my, my lifestyle was such that I had to buy things and make quick decisions and uh, especially for skin, right? So I always imagine if I buy very expensive brands, they will take care of me, right? Let us see now how they're taking care of us. Algae is fine. Um, Cyclopenetolis siloxane, right? It's actually a silicone together with the other, the uh, dimethicone, we've seen it so often, trimethicone as well, polysilicone 11. These are all silicones. So, silicones by right, they're not that bad, but they are still irritants, potential irritants. I talked about this on um, the, the show last night with Kat. And what they do is they leave a plastic, um, you know, lab, uh, they leave a plastic, uh, um, um, uh, you know, what uh, uh, um, coating on your skin. And that's why when you use ingredients with silicone, right, you imagine that it's doing something wonderful to your skin because you think, hey, there's a bit of glow on my skin today, right? Or you realize that your um, pores and your fine lines are getting better. They're not getting better. They're just being filled up by plastics, guys. Look at all these ingredients and learn to recognize them, okay? It's 500 bucks for plastic. You might as well go, you know, get something you're not using from home. Let's make a plastic and melt it down and coat it on your face. Then you won't have all your fine lines and your pores, right? It's a pl you have one layer of plastic on your skin, right? So that's why these things make you look better, okay? I'm going to move on uh, for now. Then we have um, butylene glycose, okay? Hydrogenated vegetable oil. All these are fine until we come to... And in between, there's really a lot of botanicals, which are beautiful ingredients, okay? I, I see a lot of things in there that I personally have not tried in my lab, and I'm going to try and um, import these uh, to try, try out in the lab for my research purpose, okay? Uh, what's not okay next is polycrimalamide. Uh, no, wait. Oh, we have the petrolatum and the isoparaffin, right? Now, this is actually um, made of um, um, these... These are actually things that's derived from petroleum. So they are highly, uh, uh, they are pollutants only. We, we classify them as pollutants only because this whole process of um, extracting these ingredients, right, um, are very harmful. They are non-renewable and they are made from crude oil. So I don't like them. Um, they're not carcinogens though, okay? Uh, they, may, they may be smiley, toxic um, for your skin if you overuse them. But other than that, I don't see a huge problem um, except for we don't like them because they, they are not really sustainable, okay? And then the next uh, that I don't like uh, in this uh, ingredient list, can we have the next highlights? Will be poly polychylamide, okay? Polychylamide is actually a thickener. This is very high on the level of carcinogenic, um, uh, very high on the carcinogenic level. Uh, I don't understand why they're using it except for maybe, again, it's a legacy formulation because this product has been in the market for some time. Um, next, we move on to the, the emollient that I don't like. Um, can we move on to the next ingredient? Yes, the stereal dimanium chloride. This is also, um, this is an emollient. It's supposed to make your skin smoother. Uh, it is a toxin and it is also a pollutant as well. So take note of that, okay? But it's lower down the list already. So they didn't really use a lot of that. And then they have pantaline glyco, which is the humectant. Um, this is an irritant if, um, in some products if you use too high percentages. But in this, um, in this uh, um, formulation, I think it's fine because it's really low down. So I don't think they use a lot of it. 
And then, guys, again, oh gosh, why do they do this all the time? Look, fragrance and parfum. Um, the hydroxy citronella is also a fake fragrance, guys. So I'm not going to talk anymore. You know how disappointed I am with this, okay? You should never put fake fragrances in any products for the skin because they don't do anything for your skin and you don't need them to make the product, okay? And then lastly, the preservative are all the things that we don't like, the sodium, EDTA, BHT, and phenoxy ethanol. So guys, that's 510 bucks for you. I shall not bring up all three um, uh what do you call that? A, um, moisturizers. And we're going to take a look now at what is my favorite. So definitely not La Mer, okay? Uh, although it's 510 bucks. The other two, let me take a look at the price list, okay? Um, yes, so I, I actually chose uh, high, um, Drunk Elephant um, because it is, um, I find that the way they, form, the, the formulation for this and um, Ellie Brockett is actually good. Okay, it's just that this one uh, with an edge because they presented the ingredient list ethically and in a way that um, the consumer is able to understand easier what goes into their products. And for that, right, I give this uh, Hui En's Drunk Elephant the price for this round. So um, good job there, Hui En, but don't need to buy 17 others, stick to this, okay? Or... Um, Show me your other uh, moisturizers and we can take a look to see whether there's others in there that's good as well, okay? Um, before I move on to Dirty Cop, I'm going to bring up another product that's uh, submitted by Si Yu Lim, right? Um, for those of you whose products I picked, right, can you just identify yourself by messaging the... Um, because we need to put your name into the draw later. So if you're around tonight, can you just identify yourself and say I'm so-and-so, okay? So this is again Frank Skincare. It is a uh, Frank Skincare and it's a face oil submitted by Si Yu Lim. So a face oil is not like the other three products that we've seen, right? The other three products has water-based ingredients as well, which is why they are creams. They use emulsifiers to mix oil and water together to create a product. This is just a face oil. So it is actually um, um, all botanicals. There's nothing on the highlight here except for, guys, you must learn to use oil more. So good job, so you are using oils in your routine, right? And this is actually a very well-formulated um, product in terms of the selection of the um, ingredients. Um, it's only one thing that I want you guys to be careful of is that they have rose auto oil there. Um, I hope they use less than 0.02% because that's the derma limit if it's an essential oil. If they're using an extraction, I use rose oil in my lab, but not the essential oil. I use extraction by oil. Okay, a rose, I have Moroccan rose oil um, in the, the lab that is not essential and that I can use in higher amounts. So I hope this is either used in less than 0.02% or they're using an extracted um, ingredient here, okay? Not uh, essential oil, then that's fine. Um, okay, so without further ado, I'm going to move on now to Dirty Cop, and I'm going to quickly run through the types of ingredients and moisturizers that all of you have to be very, very, you know, to watch out for. Um, we don't like PEGs. Um, anything that's PEG, we don't like as an emulsifier. Emollients or paraffins, okay? Uh, they're very harmful to your skin if you use them for long term. Or silicones, um, they are in these names, siloxane, dimeticone, trimeticone, polysilicone, and more. Uh, as long as they're silicones, I don't really like them because of the reasons I stated earlier. Preservatives, we don't like parabens. There's none tonight, which is very good. Um, we don't like EDTAs. We don't like formaldehyde. We don't like triclosan. We don't like BHD and certainly not phenoxy ethanol. But I have to highlight something, okay? If it's phenoxy ethanol and it's used less than 7%, it's actually okay. Okay, so if you see it very far down the list, it's actually okay. Um, definitely not anything that gives an, uh, a fake fragrance like parfum and fragrance. So with that, I shall now bring April back in with me and... Hi, hi, thank you so much. So every, 510 bucks. Exactly. Every episode, we are mind blown by what we discover. So definitely, it's not necessary that expensive is good, as we have found out in mm. these three episodes. Um, so now, I, I think I, it's important for us to also share with our viewers the first few episodes uh, of the Fawn Labs because uh, of the uh, Dirty Nights with Fawn Labs because I think uh, if you haven't seen those I will just quickly paste it on the on the chat right now so you can 
um, see it. And then also your YouTube channel. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the videos are uh, uploaded there as well. So I'm just quickly going to share that. And before we start, okay, let me also add uh, your handles and uh, Huyen's Instagram handle. Um, and right now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn on all your videos uh, before we start. We're going to explain, we're, we're going to um, invite you to turn on your videos uh, because we will be um, uh, doing the raffle. We're going to do a live raffle for uh, flows, uh, flow aroma. Uh, that's the prize. So let they me actually just, just flow, just flow. Uh, yeah, F flow. Okay, flow. Mm -hmm. All right. Let me just invite everyone. So, so please turn on your videos. Feel free to turn on your videos before we start the Q and A. Okay. So the giveaway for all of you who have participated by sending us your. Um, you know, products to run through the ingredient list, right? One of you will walk away with the beautiful birch wood um, diffuser from Flo. And uh, for those of you who are with us and you are wondering how it looks, feel free to go to their website and take a look at their wonderful range. Okay, great. So um, we have a couple of more people and I, I saw that there were some questions as well uh, from Facebook. So we're going to bring that over um, April, are we um, going to do the giveaway first or Q&A yes. first? Yes, uh, we're going to do the giveaway first. Yes. Okay. So. <laughs> okay, and by the way, if we choose your name and you are not here, we have to draw another name. All right, so that's just part of the, the mechanic. So I think, Eldred, we can go ahead and start. Good luck, guys. Pickle and tiny. No, I thought, no, I thought it stopped. Oh, has it stopped? Is it a lag? Oh, Lay Sophie, Lily Rain, are you with us in um, the? Uh, is she here with us tonight? Lay Sophie, Lily Rain. Is Lay Sophie, Lily Rain with us tonight? You have Please. to be in this Zoom chat. Exactly. Let's Sophie Lily Rain. Okay. Last call. Going three, two, <laughs> one. Then we have to draw. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. you're very excited. So you say Yes, spouse. okay, good. We have another chance for another winner. Gwen! <laughs> it's one Gwen here tonight. Is Gwen here? Is Gwen here with us tonight? Gwen, are you here? Is Gwen not Gwen, here? No, three, two, one. No, Gwen is not here. So good news for everyone who's uh, <laughs> here in the group. Okay. Is need... Gwen here? No. No. Let, let me just check. I see her name, you know, actually. Oh, okay. Let me check. Huh? Uh, Gwen, Gwen, you want to... Gwen, you have to indicate that you're here to claim the Gwen. prize. Hello, Gwen. Hi, I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gwen is here. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. I saw her name earlier when I was running through the questions. I okay, good, good, yeah. good. Congratulations, Gwen. <laughs> I love your Paula choice, by the way. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations. Bye. That's so amazing. That's so amazing. Thank so, you, Gwen. Yeah. Uh, now, okay. Uh, we're going to start the Q&A now. So um, let me see. So we have one question. Anonymous attendee. My facial therapist warned me against uh, using oil-based facial products because it may cause oil seeds. Are there any considerations of, or advice that you can give when considering facial oils? This is uh, one of my favorite topics when it comes to beauty in general, right? I talk about doing double cleanse. I talk about using oil products and people are not using it enough. So basically our skin mantle, which is the topmost um, you know, layer of your skin, right? It's made up of both oil and water part. In order to keep it healthy and happy, you have to use products that has both oil and water in it. Singaporeans use too much water-based products because they think that it's better in the humid weather, right? That's wrong. Okay, number one. Number two, 
whatever problems you're ha having, right, usually it's caused by because of your cleansing. It's nothing to do with the products that you're using after the cleansing. If you don't have a clean canvas, right, nothing else you put on will work well. And when you have things like oil seeds, it's because there's, there's a lot of accumulation of something in the pores, under the skin, etc. So what you have to do is not remove your oil um, products, but to ensure that your cleansing is done properly, remove the oils um, in the pores, the sebum that's built up, use an exfoliant. Uh, exfoliant. Um, you can even check out our first episode. We taught you a way to make a very good exfoliant with um, food waste, okay? Um, the other thing is double cleansing. When you're using the oil cleanser first, it pushes and it, when you rub it into your skin, right, oil will dissolve the sebum that's in your skin. Sebum is actually... Um, you know, coagulated oil, imagine that in your pores. So water will not bring it out. Only when you use an oil cleanser, right, you tend to dissolve all these. Makeup is made up of a lot of silicone, okay? Your sunscreen has a lot of silicone. So as long as you're using this kind of products, right, you have to use an oil cleanse. I do oil cleansing twice. Um, I mean, I do oil cleansing as much as possible every day, whether or not I'm uh, using makeup. And I don't usually put on makeup. I put on sunblock. And I do oil cleansing every day, followed with a water wash. So I hope I answered your question. So facial oils is still a must. It's just that you have to look at your exfoliating product and you must also wash your face and clean your face better. Okay, then you'll prevent all this. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for that, uh, Han. So we have another question. So this is coming from uh, Facebook. Let me just read through it. So... This question is from Cheryl. Uh, mm -hmm. What can you say about MediPlus? MediPlus, is that a, a brand or product? I can't comment about that unless I see the ingredient list. So I have to give this uh, a pass. Okay. But I encourage uh, Cheryl to send this to us via our Facebook or Instagram private message. We are on, uh, you can find us at Bond Labs. Okay. Just add us there and send me the product list and I can advise you from there. Okay, perfect. Um, now we have one question from Elizabeth. So Elizabeth, we will uh, pull you in. Um, we will unmute you so that we ca you can ask a question directly. Hello. Hi. Um, hi. Hi, Han. Again, sorry, it's me again. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely to meet with you again. <laughs> Yeah, I follow all three sessions. So, <laughs> oh, thank you so much. <laughs> okay, all right. So, um, my question is, um, a lot of people say that once you get dark rings and eye bags, there's nothing you can do about it. Not even like plastic surgery. So, my question to you is, do you have a formula for dark rings and eye bags? Believe it or not, uh, I really give, I given, you know, we call it Halloween edition. You were with us earlier on, right? That is like yep. the worst I've uh, looked in these years ever, right? But before that, uh, before, if I don't have that and I have to create a, um, a Halloween edition with older photos, um, shortly after childbirth, right, I had very bad eye rings and eye bags and it was very, very, very bad. I, I can tell you, I, uh, my, my eyes, um, this entire area mm -hmm. was all wrinkled up here as well and also here, okay? I don't know how I did it, but where, as I eliminated toxin from my life, and I'm not just talking about using products that has no toxins in it. I'm talking about my entire lifestyle change. I actually um, use less plastics in most of the things that I carry them around to eat in. Um, I also uh, eat healthier. I eat more raw foods. Um, I try not to sleep late and stuff like that, right? Um, it improved a lot. I, I wish I can show you a very old photo of myself, right? But there's no such thing called you can't remove that. Uh, it's all got to do with the toxins that's built up in our lives. So this, although I would love to tell you and lie to you, like you come to Fondas, I can give you a product. No, I'm not going to do that, okay? <laughs> what you first start to do is to watch your diet, you know, uh, also exercise, water, all this will help eliminate toxins in as many areas of the life. And, and you've been with us for three weeks, right? Certainly now in terms of um, uh, things that you put on your body, you are a bit more aware, right? Start with that first, okay? And then if I do see you at Fawn Labs, let's talk more, all right? <laughs> okay. But it's all not right. impossible. It's not impossible. It's good to hear that there's no... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look forward to meeting you again, okay? Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. 
Thank you for your question, Elizabeth. Yeah. Um, so Han, this one will be the last question. Yes. And it will be from Shumin. Ah, okay. Shumin. Okay, so since I think um, Chumin would prefer for us to ask a question, so uh, what do you recommend for dark or uh, sunspots? I, I personally know Chumin, so I know why she's asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chumin, for uh, sunspots, you have to look for ingredients that's uh, brightening. Um, licorice root extract is very good for that purpose. Cucumber seed extract is very good for that purpose. Uh, if you, you know what, visit me after um, <laughs> uh, this circuit breaker is over, right? Let me see if I can uh, do something bespoke for you and then you try it out, okay? But there are natural botanicals that can help with brightening skin. Unfortunately, if you are thinking of buying products that say skin whitening, right? Um, you, you have to be very afraid if they really do whiten your skin because there's no such thing. Unless they're using like Clorox on your skin, uh, I hope your skin whitens and that's all it does but um look for things that skin brightening not not um those things that say that whiten your skin okay <laughs> all right thank you so much so um han i will pass it to you and huyen thank you huyen are you still around she's uh, yes i am <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay so are you glad that you at least you spend money on a good product right yeah, I should yeah. be more patient like this. Yes, not just that, you have to um, buy less, okay? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hand it over to you now, okay, mm -hmm. to tell us um, something related to the big giveaway we have for everyone, okay? So I'll let you explain first, then I'll talk about the giveaway that we have for everyone. You can take it away. Okay, um, so the thing that's related to the giveaway is a fundraiser that I'm, I'm supporting. Um, beginning of, this, uh, of April this year, this fundraiser campaign was started to support two NGOs, um, HealthServe and Transient Workers Count 2 during this um, COVID pandemic. So they have been doing great work for the migrant worker community, providing aid such as um, social assistance, medical treatment and casework assistance consistently, but they need more help now as the migrant worker community has been um, very badly affected by the pandemic. So you can choose which NGO you want to um, donate to, HealthServe or TWC2, and the donations will be used to help the migrant workers um, tied through this pandemic. So some ways the fund that will be used um, are to provide uh, Isling cards for the patients who are discharged from the hospitals but don't have anyone to accompany them back home, or to purchase and top up SIM cards for um, newly awarded migrant workers um, in community hospitals to stay connected and to support daily operations like um, healthcare services, telecounseling, um, case management, communication for migrant workers, and uh, more. So if you'd like to know more details, you can visit the fundraiser page. Um, I think the link is up there. And the fundraiser will end on 31st May, which is on Sunday. So it'd be great if you can take the opportunity to support the migrant workers through this fundraiser. But um, after 31st May, you can still donate to the respective um, NGOs on the website. So it's just easier for you um, to have this platform to donate now. So I'll hand over the time now to Han um, to tell you more about the giveaway. Hey, Han, you're muted. Han, sorry. Uh, okay. Oh yeah, no, sorry. No, <laughs> I shall repeat myself again, rewind, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Now, thank you, Hui En. So we love um, to support courses like this. And for um, someone, uh, a young lady like Hui En with so much passion, Fond Labs will stand with her. So this is the prize that we are move, uh, putting out tonight as a giveaway. Uh, last week, we actually raised awareness for lower income families and to provide meals for them. And some of you have been very generous. I cannot thank you. And this is really from the bottom of our hearts from the team and myself. Thank you very much for all of you who have contributed. We don't mind how much you contributed. Every bit helps. So the price for this giveaway is... Um, we are giving away an experience that you can join us at the lab with. So as long as you contributed to the two courses, last week and this week's course, it doesn't matter how much it is, just send us a print screen. You can cover the amount that you contributed, your IC number, things like that. Okay, just tell us you attended 30 nights. You will then go into a draw to stand a chance to win this experience, which is valued at $500. One of you will come and sit with me 
okay? And we will work out a whole suite of um, bespoke skincare for you, um, three skincare products that is made with ingredients picked just for you. You can smell and try out everything that if you have oily skin, I can let you try oils that's dry oils. So you love this experience, you can smell everything and you're really nice smelling some of these, okay, without any fake fragrances. So we'll put together three um, a, a, uh, skincare products that you choose and then we'll send to you a um, um, sample size. You try it out. If you like it, We'll send you the full size. If not, we will reformulate it one time and send you the full size. This is a really special gift, guys. So I hope you will contribute to the two courses, um, last week's course and this week's course. Anything, okay? Just contribute any amount that you want and send us by email or by private message on Facebook or Instagram at Fawn Labs. Follow us. Also, guys, um, before I go, we are having a very fun activity this Saturday, right? Um, those of you who are parents, do go to our Facebook page because we're teaching the kids how to make bath bombs. And that's where my tea saints, my floral teas will come in help you soon, okay? So we are allowing you to sign up all the way until tomorrow because you have to go to the supermarket of uh, Punhua to buy some ingredients. Do sign up earlier so we can send you the ingredient list and join us on Saturday 3.30. You can find the information on Fonlet's Facebook page and Instagram page, okay? Um, with that, I shall hand it back to... Oh, before that, guys, do me a favor. If you really enjoyed yourselves uh, on this Dirty Nights right? drop us a review. It's very important for a business like us because we are experienced. We are, um, a business is about experience. It's about, um, you know, uh, your, your time spent at the lab with us, right? So we don't have a website to show and products and stuff like that, right? It's a little bit difficult for people to have an impression of us. So those of you who had interacted with us via this three weeks on Dirty Nights, I seek your help to give us a very good review. If there's anything that we've done that we can improve on, right? Feel free to send it to us and even put it in the reviews. We are always up for innovating and learning from what we've done badly and what we're done uh, doing good, we want to continue. Okay, so share that with us on our Facebook page and give us a review so we know how we're doing here. Okay, thank you, April. <laughs> Thank you so much, Han. Wow. Uh, it has been an amazing journey. Three uh, straight weeks of giving all this value to all uh, the viewers. So I really want to hand it to you and your team. Thank you so much. Thank for... you, April. No, yeah. April is from Dolce Vita. They, we partner up with them, right? We got them in to participate because they are standing for sustainability as well. So if any of you are looking to have any events, um, do look for April. She's from Dolce Vita. She does such a wonderful job. My team and I cannot be happier uh, to work with her again. So we quickly put up the idea for Saturday's um, activity, right, which is called Clean days with phone labs after dirty nights you gotta go clean <laughs> thank you thank you Han. i'm so so grateful so um with that i would like to also thank everyone everyone who attended via zoom and via facebook so uh, i would just like to remind everyone that there will be a post survey immediately after we end the zoom webinar we will really appreciate it if you can help us fill out this two minute survey so um, again, thank you so much, everyone who registered, uh, and we truly appreciate your support. We'll see you on Saturday again. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.